Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. The economic fallout from COVID-19 has meant layoffs, redundancies and unemployment for thousands. The acting executive director of the Employers Federation, Goretti Paul, says it really is not clear whether the worst is over for businesses and the economy. She urges caution given what is playing out on the international scene with the second wave of the virus and countries having to reinstate lockdowns. Geneve Gonzag reports. Government officials are encouraged by the country's performance so far with the reopening of the tourism sector. They say it is slow, but there has been steady arrivals thus far. But health officials warn that the country is not out of the woods yet. What about the business side? Are employers optimistic that a turnaround is near? The acting executive director of the St. Lucia Employers Federation, Goretti Paul, says the unpredictability of the pandemic makes it hard to gauge how a recovery can be expected in the short to medium term. Well, it's a little hard to tell. I mean, based on what we're seeing out in the international market, everything points to perhaps a second wave of the COVID virus here in St. Lucia. Um, look, just recently, I think only yesterday, the Bahamas had to go back on total lockdown uh, for the second time. So it is highly likely that that sort of thing may happen here in St. Lucia. As she noted, the situation with COVID-19 is fluid. Countries like South Korea and Hong Kong, which initially had great success at suppressing the spread of COVID-19, are both now dealing with second flare-ups. In Europe, infections have fallen well below earlier peaks, but local outbreaks are causing concern. The United States leads the world with 3.7 million cases and infections are soaring in states such as Florida, Texas and Arizona. Even in places like California, where the situation has been largely brought under control, new outbreaks are prompting the return of restrictions. So here in St. Lucia, the Employers Federation says, while optimism is good, people should also temper expectations about the bounce back of businesses. We can safely say that it is going to take a little while for things to return to normal. And obviously some companies would have held on to their staff because they wanted to keep them, they wanted to make things work. But as things get more difficult um, and as more challenges, um, you know, the companies face more challenges, we may very well have more layoffs and, well, more redundancies. St. Lucia's main economic owner, tourism, remains on life support and Paul projects that the situation will remain tough for the many people currently out of a job due to the impact of COVID-19 on the sector. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Geneve Gonzag. City vendor Adela James is seeking answers after being informed by representatives of the CCC that it has been demanded by a business place near her cot that she be removed. James says with over two decades of operation on Coral Street, she is lost as to why such a demand would be made. The president of the Vendors Association, Peter Ras Iper Isaac, is calling for clarification on this matter. Shaka Wooding has more. Adela James has made her living as a vendor at the interception of Mikud and Coral Street in Castries for over 22 years. The longtime vendor says throughout her years of operation in this location, she has never had any issues with city police, surrounding businesses, or even traffic authorities, as she operates on a double yellow line and as such is not obstructing parking in the city. However, things changed over the past month when she was greeted daily with no parking signs, which were replaced with no vending signs over time. She says that authorities are now calling for her immediate removal from the area, citing a complaint from a nearby business. A month ago, I just came in the morning and I started seeing no parking sign. You know, and then when I, when I, I didn't even ask the, the fellow from city council, came to me and he told me, oh, the people inside there, the commerce inside there, want six parking, and six parking from here to Europe, right? So I said that I don't have a problem because it's been like vending here, right? But then after, they called me into a meeting on Tuesday and tell me they want me to move from here as soon as possible. How the owner for the building say he doesn't want 
anybody to vend by the building. President of the Vendors Association, Peter Ras Ipa Isaac, has further expressed frustration with the treatment of vendors in the city of Castries. He believes that the methods used by authorities to communicate with vendors is demeaning. Isaac says in the case of Miss James especially, this treatment is unjust. You don't deal with people that kind of way. Someone has been here for over 20 years vending. And is, is a, I, to me, the, the kind of way they deal with this thing is without decorum or anything of that sort. You know, I mean, they don't even have the audacity to say, okay, um, you know, um, give her a letter and try to take her in a meeting and give her reasons why they don't want her there or whatever, and that she must try to find somewhere else, and you give her a period of time maybe to find somewhere to search for somewhere. That would be a way that you would deal with someone with respect. But when you just come and you just decide you want to put no vending sign, no parking sign, and so on and so forth, I find it's rather disrespectful. And I'm saying the owner of the building doesn't own the sidewalk, okay? Now, the, person, the people who are responsible for the sidewalk, yes, they could come, but they still have to come with a certain level of respect. Isaac is calling on the Castries Constituency Council to reconsider their mode of action. He says if it is determined that her relocation is necessary, this should be accompanied by guidance as to how she will sustain her business. Jaka Wooding, Hot 7 News. The Communications and Marketing Officer for Wasco, Sherry Ann Gillard Williams, has announced that St. Lucia may be emerging from the water emergency very soon. This comes following steady rains in the past week, which have nearly returned the dam to its normal capacity. More in this report. In May 2020, during the dry season, water and sewage company Wasco expressed concerns pertaining to a decreasing water level at its main intake, the John Compton Dam. Local authorities later issued a water emergency. As of August 2020, well into the hurricane season, communications and marketing officer for Wasco, Sherry Ann Gillard, reported a significant increase in the water level at the dam. According to Gillard, the John Compton Dam is hastily approaching a state of normalcy. We are pleased that Wasco to inform our customers that the dam levels have been increasing. Um, at the John Compton Dam, we now are at 332 uh, um, feet above sea level and of course that is representative of an increase in the inflows that we have been getting over the past few days obviously because of the rains that we've been experiencing. Gillard says with the water level only one foot below its normal reading at this time, Wasco is hopeful for a smooth return to a sufficient overflow level. If you do the math, you can see how we have, you know, received an increase in terms of the amount of water that we've had at the John Compton Dam, and we continue to get. We just, um, we hope that this trend continues so that we can, you know, arrive at the normal over overflow levels. She encourages members of the public to continue to adhere to the protocols of the water emergency, as it is still in effect. Jaco Wooding, Hot 7 News. The Director of Implementation within the Office of the Prime Minister, Nancy Charles, sat with Hot 7 TV's Rochelle Gonzalez to give an update on the government's income support payment program. Small business owners and entrepreneurs who have been depending on income support payments from the government of St. Lucia can breathe a sigh of relief, as according to the Director of Implementations within the Office of the Prime Minister, Nancy Charles, their checks are on the way. In response to the global COVID-19 pandemic, the government introduced an income support program which sought to help self-employed people who don't contribute to the NIC yet lost their daily income when the country was impacted by the coronavirus. Some of these people included taxi drivers, market vendors, hairdressers and barbers among others. These individuals were given checks of $500 for three months. Charles revealed on Monday that the deadline for income applications was extended from July 17th to July 31st. She gave the details of the progress of the program. In total, we have 6,558 persons who have applied, who applied for the income support program. So far, our team of processors, they are still processing. Um, but they have approved 3,191 of them um, who have been approved thus far. In terms of um, status, we've paid 1,935 persons um, so far, and we are still making calls. Person will tell you they are getting either a text message or they're getting an email seeking further clarification or further information 
um, to ensure that we are fair in processing the application to ensure that everybody qualifies and that they can get the much needed support. Um, I do want to say that we will be making a second set of payments this week on Thursday. So persons who had applied for payments to be made via the bank from last week and this week, they have been getting their payments. And then persons who applied for payments via check, as we did the last time, we will be making check payments um, sometime this week. So we will be calling them. So we do not want persons to just be calling us and trying to find out. We will call you. So Accountant General will give us the list of checks that they have prepared. I think it's in excess of over a thousand this time around. We will call you based on the number that you have given us and we will give you the day, the time and the venue for you to come and collect your check this week. Charles said as they continue, persons with bank payments will be processed first as this is easier for the Treasury Department. She revealed hopes that the next distribution of checks will be smooth. The last time we had the check payments, we used the Castro City Council. Most likely we will be using that same venue, but we have not gotten the confirmation yet. Persons were very well behaved. Persons came with their masks, they walked with their IDs. Um, so we had a very smooth process and we're hoping this time around we'll also have a very smooth process. Charles also sought to clarify some misinformation that has caused widespread confusion concerning who qualified and who didn't. Unfortunately, we did have a few persons who did not qualify. Um, persons would have seen in the news a couple of weeks ago the issue we had with the miscommunication to the farmers. And so we want to reiterate again that government does have in place a support program for farmers but it is not via the income support program. It is via the Ministry of Agriculture. So um, under the COVID response, government allocated over $7 million to the Ministry of Agriculture, and the Ministry of Agriculture internally, based on discussions with their team, have determined the best way to assist farmers um, based on the COVID response. So I think the Ministry of Agriculture is best suited, but some of the programs I do know that they have in place is that they would be providing irrigation system, for example, water tanks and other irrigation system for farmers. They will be providing them with seedlings, with fertilizer. In fact, I think what the Ministry of Agriculture is trying to do is to ensure that farmers can continue to produce. We have created a ready market for them with the St. Lucia Marketing Board, where we continue our feeding program. The DI said she is hopeful that by the end of August, they would have been able to process everybody who applied, as well as to make the payments to all those who qualify. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. This is the Hot 7 TV Nike News. Stay with us. There's more news coming up after the break.